Bible says there ain't no condemnation. The, the, another word for trigger is condemnation. What, what condemns you to make you act the way you act and do the things you do? But the minute the enemy brings condemnation to you, like Jesus just says, he says, woman, where are, where are those thine accusers? Have, have no man condemned thee? She says, no man, Lord. That's what we can say to the, our adversary, our devil, when he brings condemnation or a trigger. I'm not condemned. I'm forgiven. You can't condemn me based off the fact that I'm black or I'm tall or I'm short or I don't have no money or my credit score is not this or I didn't graduate from high school or, or this, that, and the other. There is, if you are a believer, a blood-bought believer, doing the things that God has called and created you to do, then there is nothing that can condemn you. She was about to be stoned to death. She was caught in the very act that she was doing. She was guilty. And in truth be told, there's nowhere in this verse of scripture where you see her repent. She didn't say, I'm sorry. She didn't say, Lord, forgive me. She didn't do none of that stuff. And Jesus set her free. And what did he say to her? Go and sin no more. See, you got to understand something. When you are forgiven by the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, you are forgiven. If you understand, and if you, this is what base, this is why we know the difference between a believer and a non-believer. A believer is not going to allow anybody or anything to condemn them. You think this woman is going to look, she may have walked down the street and saw some of them same people who was about to stone her, but she, Jesus just set me free. So, so you can't, that look you're giving me, yeah, that's that woman who was about to stone right there. She was caught in adultery. See, those people are going to look at you like you, you, you did, did something wrong, but, the, but she can look at them back and say, Jesus set me free. And that's what we do. We don't allow ourselves to be condemned. Like the Bible says, there, therefore, there is no condemnation to them which is already in Christ. When you're in Christ Jesus, you can't condemn me because my color of skin is black. You can't condemn me because I don't have as much money. You can't condemn me because I had a divorce. You can't condemn me because I, I did this, that, and the other. You understand where it's coming from. There are too many people who allow the world to dictate their faith in Jesus Christ off of their standards. Verse 11 again. Well, let me t read 10 so 11 makes it. When Jesus lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said to her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Have no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. Jesus said to her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. It goes back to John 3.18. That he didn't come to condemn the world. That's not what his purpose was coming for. Excuse me. His purpose wasn't to come and condemn the world. We were already condemned. We were already condemned. He came to save his people, save us from our sins. Verse 12, Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. The Pharisees therefore said unto him, Thou bearest record of thyself. Thy record is not true. Jesus answered and said unto them, Though I bear record of myself, yet my record is true. For I know whence I came, and whether I go, but you cannot tell whence I came and whether I go. Ye judge after the flesh. You hear that? He, he, just, he just let them know. Y'all judge after the flesh. Didn't, didn't we just read that God is a spirit and we that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth? He, he just, you judge after the flesh. I judge no man. And yet, if I judge, my judgment is true, for I am not alone, and I and the Father that sent me. Verse 17 in John chapter 8. It is also written in your law that the testimony of two men is true. Finally, 18. I am one that bear witness of myself, and the Father that sent me bear witness of me. See, that, that just completely destroyed all their ideologies and, and combination that they was trying to bring on people. He told them, that you judge after the flesh. Whenever I deal with anybody, it's amazing. 
all their condemnation comes from the past, obviously, because they're living in the present. Man, the internet don't like just acting crazy today on this message. Now, now it's trying to con reconnect. I usually don't have these problems. That's why I come here. second here let me reconnect my Facebook crowd that's the largest live crowd that I have make no sense well all I can do is apologize for whatever the Wi-Fi is doing it's not raining outside it's not storming I mean but like I tell people in these mountains I get what I get I actually went to a cell phone place and tried to get stronger Wi-Fi to have my mobile Wi-Fi and they said it wasn't available in this area. A lot of companies can't do this area because of the mountains and they don't want to deal with bad reception. So they don't even attempt it. <clears throat> Nevertheless, that's why I record for playback. Hebrews 10 26 for if we sin willfully after that we have received the knowledge of the truth there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. For if we sin willfully after that we have received the knowledge of the truth. The knowledge of the truth. Meaning you know the things that you're doing and what they're doing. The knowledge of the truth. Luke chapter 13, 1 through 5. There were present at that season some that told of the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifice. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Suppose ye that these Galileans were sinners above all the Galileans because they suffered such things. I tell you nay, but except you repent, except you repent, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. This is the obvious fact that I'm going to make a statement is that God gave us, once again, an exodus. He gave us a way out because he knows us. He knows our frame. He knows everything there is to know about us. He gave us a way out. When people don't take that out, there are so many times in my life where I received prophetic word from people I know and don't know at times. But one thing I know beyond a shadow of a doubt is when that word is for me. I know how, I know the choices, I know what I'm thinking, I know what's in my heart, I know what I'm doing. So when I receive a word of correction or a word from the Bible, the Holy Spirit, or even another human being, I don't have to, I don't have to judge the messenger or the message. I don't have to because I know how I'm living. I know my choices. I know what's in my heart. And I believe that's a problem with people and, and they, try and, they try and put, put what for them on something else. Once again, I hear the Bible, that's why it says that, that we need to examine ourselves. The Lord gives us an opportunity to deal with ourselves long before we have to get dealt with. He gives us ample opportunity, ample opportunity to get for, seek forgiveness, to ask for forgiveness. He gives us every opportunity we need to do what's right, to get right, and go where, where we need to go. There is no excuse, none whatsoever. So I just want you to remember, if you don't remember nothing else, that all sins are forgiven. All your sins are forgiven. Only sin that's not forgiven is blaspheming the Holy Spirit. That's the only sin, unpardonable sin. That's the only sin that, that you will not be forgiven for. Let me read the rest of that verse of scripture before we close. I'm about to choke hold this internet stuff because it's just acting crazy. But like I was saying that I've adapted as I grow older, control what you can control. I don't know how that stuff works, so I can't really do anything about it but praying a lot of power to living God to intervene and deal with that nonsense. In the meantime, I just... Keep on preaching, keep on teaching, keep on praising God. 
That's all I can do. Control what I can control. In Mark chapter 3, as we prepare to close, we're going to start 24. I believe that's what I want. Let me clear my nostrils again, excuse me. <coughs> ah, man. If you, anybody who knows me personally, know I don't take medications and whatnot, I'll get, get some orange juice. But I'm not taking no stuff. This, this, this too shall pass. So we get Mark chapter 3. Let's start. At 23, 323 in the Gospel according to him. And he called them unto him, and he said unto them in parables, How can Satan cast out Satan? 24, And if a kingdom be divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house in 25 be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan rise up against himself and be divided, he cannot stand. So even Satan has to be on one accord in his chaos, but hath an end. 27. No man can enter a strong man's house and spoil his goods except he first bind the strong man. And then he will spoil the house. Verily I say unto you, all sins shall be forgiven unto the sons of men, and blaspheme wherewith soever they shall blaspheme. But... He that shall blaspheme against the Holy Ghost have never forgiveness, but is in danger of eternal damnation, because they said he have an unclean spirit. So unless you have blasphemed against the Holy Spirit, there is nothing that you have done or could have done that you can't be forgiven for. That's important for you to know. Don't, don't walk around in any form of condemnation. I can tell you about myself, it was a long time in life where I allowed people to, to make me feel like I wasn't good enough, tall enough, fast enough, had enough money. And, and, and then we, we based our, we, sometimes we base our future off of negative people. When somebody say we can't do something, we try that much harder to do what they say we couldn't do. That's not why we do things, but we do that growing up sometimes. And then there are times where we will allow people to take control of our lives in that form. It's because they said we couldn't do it, so I'm going to try to do it. But the Bible lets us know clearly, Matthew 6, 33, that we're to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other things will be added. We have to make sure beyond the shadow of any every doubt that we're doing things based off the fact that this is what the Lord Jesus Christ has commanded me to do. That's what we do. That's our motivation for the things we do. Is because it's what the Lord tells us to do. I know a whole lot of believers that live by the have to. I, this is what I have to do. I have to do this and I have to do that. I, I used to say when I was a sinner, the only thing I have to do is stay black and die. Everything else in my life is a choice. Those are the only two things that I have to do that I can't change. Is stay the skin color that I am and die. Everything else is a, a choice of my own. I'm not going to let nobody condemn me into working a job until I'm 65, 70 years old to, to retire. I begin to, 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 to read the scripture and begin to get free from the ideologies of this world and, and, the, and the judgments of the flesh. The things that people told me I had to do according to what they thought and by their fears. There are so many people bound to systems and systems and governments for people who are only keeping people in bondage based off the love of money, which is the root to all evil. I was sharing something yesterday on the internet and a guy had responded to what I shared based off of his fears. And I pray for people like that because we indirectly or directly put our fears on other people. And that's what he did. He tried to, he tried to cast his fears on me based off of the choices that he has made in his life. Well, I, I have to do this because of that. Well, that's you. And I'm, this is what I'm saying. That 
The very fact that he let us know that all of our sins are forgiven should set some people free. The fact that you're forgiven, the fact that you are forgiven should help you understand that God has a purpose for, for his creation, which is you. He has a purpose for you. Accept your forgiveness, walk in your forgiveness, and do what God has called and created you to do. Now, if you've been watching by Instagram or Facebook and, and, the, and the feed has uh, given you problems, um, I am recording for YouTube for playback so you can watch this whole message uninterrupted. That's why I do it. I have three cameras staring at me. Facebook Live, Instagram Live, and a camera for YouTube for playback. That's why I do it in case the internet fell. Continue to pray for our ministry and the things that God has called and created us to do. Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for what our eyes have seen, our ears have heard, Father God. I thank you for your word, Lord Jesus. I thank you for your forgiveness. <laughs> it's amazing how you knew how, how many times in this life we would mess up and you still allowed us to come forth and to be used in creation for your glory, Lord Jesus. We can shout all day off that fact alone. You gave us grace before we was even created. It's amazing how the enemy would come in to try to take our grace and to tell us to try to remind us that we're not worthy. When we know we're not, our righteousness is as filthy rags, Father God. But our righteousness is not in us, it's in you. We proclaim, decree in the name of Jesus, the name of Jesus, that you are the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. The Bible lets us know that we can do all things through you and in you. Because of your accomplished works. We stand on your word. Backed up by the Holy Spirit. Thanking and praising you for all the power and authority that you've given us. Greater is you in us than we that's in this world. There's nothing in the name of Jesus that can come upon us. And do to us. That you have not already overcame. Thank you for your word Father God. Because in 2022 it still delivers. It still has the same power and authority. That is had since you once delivered it to the, to the original saints. I bless your name, Father God. I thank and praise you for these platforms. I pray that these problems get worked out with the internet and with these devices, Father God. Nevertheless, we're going to preach the gospel. If I have to preach it on the mountaintop and, and just let your word go out, it will not return it to your void. We thank and praise you in Jesus Christ's name we pray. God bless you guys. Talk to you soon.